As always, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before moving on. Before we attempt to solve this question, we need to remind ourselves of a couple of basic facts about point charges and electric fields. Negative charges produce electric field lines that point towards the negative charge. So we can draw a series of electric field lines pointing inward towards the negative charge. Positive charges, on the other hand, produce electric field lines that point away from the positive charge. We can draw a few lines to indicate that type of electric field. So, for example, imagine that we were examining this point right here. According to what we just discussed, the negative charge would produce an electric field that points towards the negative charge in the left direction. The positive charge would also produce an electric field, and it would point away from the positive charge. Now, away from the positive charge would also point to the left. Since both electric fields are pointing in the same direction, there would be no opportunity for them to cancel each other out. In fact, the only way that we can get the electric field lines to cancel is if one line pointed to the left and the other one pointed to the right. In a situation like that, they could cancel each other out and that would produce a total electric field of zero. So we can't get that situation. We can't get an electric field equaling zero at this point, nor would we be able to do that for any points that are situated between the positive and the negative charge. So that means that we have to look either over here on the left side of the negative charge or over here on the right side of the negative charge. So let's consider a point on the right side of the positive charge. The positive charge would again produce an electric field that points away from the positive charge. Over at this location, away from the positive charge would be directed to the right. The negative charge would produce an electric field that points towards that negative charge. So in that case, it would point towards the left. Now this looks initially promising because we've got one field pointing to the right and the other field pointing to the left. However, we'll notice that this point is located much closer to the positive charge than it is to the negative charge. Also note that the positive charge has a much greater magnitude of charge compared to the negative charge. What that means is that the electric field produced by the positive charge will always be larger in magnitude than will be the electric field produced by the negative charge. The negative charge only has 2.5 microcoulombs and it's much farther away. So its electric field line will necessarily always be smaller than the electric field produced by the positive charge. So although they point in opposite directions, they will never cancel each other out. So the only side of the picture that's left to explore is over here on the left side of the negative charge. We can pick an arbitrary point and mark it there. Notice that the electric field produced by the negative charge would point towards it. The electric field produced by the positive charge would point away from the positive charge, so that would be to the left. Here we have another situation that perhaps will produce vectors, electric field vectors, that will cancel each other out. And although it might be difficult to see this, in this case it's going to work. The thing is we are much closer to the negative charge, so one might think that the electric field produced by the negative charge will always be larger than the electric field produced by the positive charge. However, even though we're closer to the negative charge, the magnitude of that negative charge is smaller, and that will tend to reduce the size of the electric field. So in essence, it will be feasible, it will be possible to find a point where the electric field produced by the negative charge is exactly equal in magnitude to the electric field produced by the positive charge. Now perhaps we can call the electric field produced by the negative charge E negative and the electric field produced by the positive charge E positive. And what we want is for their magnitudes to be equal. So we can write the following equation. A nice simple equation showing that the electric fields are equal in magnitude. We need to remember what the equation is for an electric field produced by a positive point charge and a negative point charge. And that equation would show us that the electric field is equal to the Coulomb constant multiplied by the magnitude of the charge divided by a distance squared. We'll talk more about that distance in just a moment. In fact, speaking of distance, what we need to do is add an additional label to our diagram. We know that we can get a net electric field of zero at this location, but what we don't know is the distance from that location to, let's say, the negative charge. So we can call that distance x. Now that we know the formula for the electric field produced by a point charge, we can plug in for the positive electric field and also for the negative electric field. Now, we'll want to note that the distance for the positive charge, the r value, has been labeled as 1 plus x, and we just want to make sure we understand where that's coming from. 
The positive charge is located right here, of course, and we know that the distance from this arrowhead over to the next arrowhead is one meter, but we have to add an additional increment of x onto that in order to reach the point where the net electric field will equal zero. So that distance in total would be one plus x. Now what's sort of neat about our setup here is that the k appears in both terms on either side of the equation so we can eliminate it from the equation. In addition, the microcoulombs will end up canceling out as well. Once we take the absolute value of negative 2.5, we would be left with the following. Now this could get messy if we attempted to square out the 1 plus x, but it turns out there's a nice little trick that works here whenever you have a fraction equaling a fraction and part of your fractions involves a squaring. What we can do is take the square root of each part of the fractions, so both the numerators and the denominators. And what's nice about that is that the square root of x squared will just become x. Similarly, the square root of 1 plus x squared will become just 1 plus x. So that's a nice trick. It gets rid of the squaring in the equation. The square root of 6, you'll have to plug that into your calculator, and same for the square root of 2.5. Next, we can cross multiply. So we're gonna multiply 2.45 times x to give us 2.45x, and then we'll cross multiply 1.58 times one plus x. Make sure the one plus x is in parentheses, so it's gonna look like this, 1.58 times one plus x. We can then distribute the 1.58 into the parentheses. We'll then subtract the 1.5x on both sides of the equation. And then finally, divide both sides by 0.868, and that's going to allow us to solve for x. We'll come over here and put the result. And we see that x is approximately 1.8 meters. And again, notice from the diagram that that 1.8 meters is to the left of the negative charge, so we could add that description. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you liked it, please subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You're always welcome to send in your own question to the email address on your screen.